Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to path an honor mode run. Now I was one of the first 500 people in the world to beat honor mode and since then I've beaten it several times and have some pretty good ideas how to get through it. Now everyone says the hardest part of honor mode is the first five levels. So I'm going to show you how to get to level four with only four combats and that's counting the nautiloid. So obviously we started the Nautiloid. Um, I chose a Druid to show that any class can do this. Druid is widely considered one of the least good classes. But it has Enhanced Jump, and because of that, it works great at going fast. <clears throat> About here, you'll see that I'm jumping pretty far, and that's because I also have the uh, a, a high strength. Usually a Druid doesn't need that, but that's what you build to make sure you're jumping this far. Now we're at four times speed here, but I still get through the first four levels in under hour and a half. And so you'll see how to do that. Now this is one of the combats that I always do on purpose because they are an auto win, basically. You almost can't lose that fight. The same is true of those imps you have to fight at the front, but it's because it's a required fight. Now we've got the party. If this was a solo run, we could have left them, but either way, it doesn't matter. I had gotten command ready for the sword drop, but they stayed too far back, so we're just going to skip all that. And as you see, nice and easy. They try to fight a little bit, and it just isn't enough to take down our person. If you get the potion of hate, uh, speed, on the way, you can do it even faster, but I wouldn't waste a potion of speed on this. And then back to jumping. Now, I do from here on solo, because I want to show that it can be done with anything. You can do it as a party if you'd like. Most people are playing honor mode as a party, but I like to try it solo. Now, first we stealth and try to jump past these. We actually get seen here, but it's okay. As long as we don't die, we can jump away and flee combat. That, that enhanced jump really makes a big difference to being able to flee combat that you accidentally get put into. It'll happen one more time in the video and you'll see what I mean. Now here we're just basically skipping any encounters we can and seeking out things that will give us EXP. And recruiting the party members, of course. Uh, I don't think recruiting the party members gives EXP most of the time, but they do give you um, supplies, and you know if you're in a party, you're going to want to recruit them anyway, not playing solo. Well, hell, even when I play solo, I recruit them. Now, here we go, up to the tiefling encounter. These ones, you will get EXP for talking them down, pretty sure at least. Yep, there it is. And then I always ask her to say please. She never does, though. I don't understand why. So we keep going. Now, this is um, a fight that we might be able to skip potentially, but again, this is just so easy. It's not worth skipping. You could basically do nothing in this fight, and you would still win. I don't think they have any way to actually kill Zevlor. Well, maybe if they all focused on him and they're all alive, but <laughs> chances are Will and the others will do enough damage to take him down. Even on honor mode. We went as a bear to make it easy. Moon Druid is really good for solo because uh, each wild shape form is basically an HP balloon that you can use to buffer some damage in fights where you're fighting against overwhelming odds. Usually, you know, there'd be four of us, uh, having four or five enemies while there's only one of us means we could potentially take a lot of damage. But we don't. And already, the amount of content going up to here, it, this is about a quarter of the time it took to finish the entire getting to level four. Now we're coming up upon the most important scene in the whole game. 
Got to make sure you punch Aridin in the face. Bam! Very important. Talk to Zevlor. Got to make sure you talk to Zevlor. Now, here's where the pathing actually gets a bit more specific, okay? So first, talk to Roland. Now, even if you fail this, as I did here, you can still actually get him to be on your side, do what you want. Check his haystack, get the loot, talk to the ox, and talk to Donnie. Now, Donnie, I, I did well on this one, but you might miss him. If you miss him here, you can get him on the next pass, because he'll, he'll reappear after you teleport. I'll show you when. Now, you talk to Arabelle's parents there. That's very important. If you talk to the parents before you talk to these druids and go inside, you get a little extra EXP. Now, I also went up here and looted some chests. Went down here and looted the chest. This is not necessary for just going for speed. This is more for having a little extra gold and loot. Okay, now down to Kaga. Now we're going to try to save Arabella here. It's the, a little easier since we're a druid. Talk to Kaga. Make sure you get do that. And talk to Wrath. Now come back here and, and get through this chest. Now we tried to unlock it and failed, but we can just smash it open. And that's as a druid, so it's not like you need a lot of crazy weaponry. I'm using a staff. Okay, come in. Talk to Nettie. Head on back down. Finish the talk with Nettie. Make sure you get that poison. Now wait in here for a sec, because when she goes away, we'll be able to take that and teleport out to Emerald Green Environs. Now we go back inside the, the place. We don't have to wait for the gate to go up. We'll just jump around, take a little extra damage. It's okay. We're not going to be fighting, so taking a little extra damage here doesn't really matter. I, I talked to Zevlor, too, because I want to make sure that if we finish this quest, we get our, all of our... Uh, correct loots, but I don't think we actually need to talk to Zevlor there. I also always come to Damon here to buy the safeguard shield. Very good early game, especially solo, because it's plus one to all saves. And saves come up in the early game. Now we're going to go into the prison and talk to Saza. Say, try to save her from this um, angry tiefling, and it worked. So we get a little EXP from talking to her and agreeing to free her. We don't have to actually free her yet, so we're going to go back out. Now, now, you'll see Donnie's right there again. But we already talked to him, so because we talked to him, we're going to go down and talk to Mole instead. And we are going to get the quest for the idol. This will matter later. Talk to the parents again. Now that you've saved Arabella, you get a little more EXP, and we can teleport back to Emerald Grove environs. Now we've finished the uh, grove for now, so let's just go to the first couple encounters. Now first we're going to find the uh, brother and sister who's older brother is dying. Make sure you uh, use medicine or something to try to avoid a fight here. You, you can fight them, but it's not necessary. I, I like to send them to the owlbear because it makes the owlbear fight easier. Talk to Aridin, and then jump on over here to talk to Scratch. Now, Scratch is great because no matter how many times you fail, as you see here, I failed everything. I left. Talk again. Oh, I can just pass it. So it's another one that you cannot actually fail. Now this next one, we can actually fail. This one can be a problem. So what we're going to do here is long rest before we go into the Bloody Village. Uh, don't watch this part if you haven't done Dark Urge. Close your eyes. And now you talk a little bit, come back, and go. Now. When you're in here, because we rested, we can use the Illithid power to stop the fight. We get a big chunk of EXP from basically beating all the goblins in this encounter. Now we're just going to do a little more collection. We're getting some food, some items, and um, oh yeah, here, I noticed since I had gotten the Blighted Village waypoint, I had missed recruiting Will back into the grove, so I went back to recruit him. You don't actually get EXP for it, but again, it's for the supplies and for getting Will. Now, in this building, just next to the waypoint, there's a lot of um, different stuff for alchemy, but then when you go in the basement here, there's a lot more loot. Perfect, yes. Now, um, in this next room, there's one of these coffins you can open without consequence, this one right here. If you open the other ones, you will start a fight. And now, if you read the book in the previous room, you can get to that mirror without any checks. It's all just choices. 
Now here I had forgot to bring lock picks, and then I also forgot that this key right there actually unlocks that. So I went out and got the lock picks, then came back here. So I wasted a little bit of time, maybe a minute or two, but it's not that big of a deal. You'll see. Now we come over here, break down, and get into this basement. Now we get the thieves' tools, and we get a lot of other items. We can't f forge the uh, susser weapon yet, but we can move on with the uh, blueprints. And now, see, now I just went back here and remembered, oh yeah, I have a key. Okay, so now once up the top, you head to the north. We're going to avoid the encounters here. You don't, you don't want to fight the two in the, in the barn, but you can take the dagger here, because taking the dagger does give 15 EXP. Now we got to deal with the Raphael conversation. This always happens if you come up to the north like this. That's normal. Now, if you went to the right, you would fight a, a fight that we'll do later. That's one of the only fights we actually do. But instead, we're going to go up here to Joaquin's Rest. Now, this one can be a little tricky because you might fail this a couple times. I succeeded, but if you fail, you can go up through the, the entrance on the side, the top left, where the uh, man is held under the beam, and you can get in the building anyway. So I, I freed her, jumped back down, go outside, talk to her. Very free, very big EXP jump for nothing. And so I, uh, I shouldn't have done that with a melee attack, but it didn't matter. So here, this amount of EXP, you can get a little extra if you get the uh, dowry. I didn't get the dowry, so that's that. But then you can also get a little EXP if you pass this check here, which I also didn't. So instead I had to fight the bull. You only get like one EXP for fighting the bull, so if you can, don't fight the bull. It's not really worth it. Uh, as you see, the enhanced leap is still going strong. It'll go strong the entire game. So now that we've done the north, we're going out to the south. Now this one I actually messed up again, but it doesn't matter. There's, you have room for error in this. So here you can get EXP as well. And I unfortunately chose the path that gives the least EXP, which is again to fight them. You want to choose the path where you're on their side, you'll get a little extra EXP. Otherwise you only get one per guy. As you see there. So now we're going to jump through the um, swamp. I don't ever try to reroll that one because I like it just staying as a nice happy swamp. But once you get the waypoint there, you can teleport back to Blighted Village and head west to the goblin camp. Now, right as you get to this bridge, you're going to long rest again. This long rest is again to refresh our illithid powers, and since we're dirge, to get our dirge cloak. Change our gear a little bit, not that important as we've shown you. Going in now, there, there'll be another one of these illithid checks. It's a 2 plus, so as long as you have plus 1 or just don't roll a 1, you're pretty much set. Get in and hit this cutscene. Cut Make sure you talk to Volo here, because he'll go inside. Now when you go inside, unfortunately we're going to have to long rest one more time here. Now I don't like doing two one after the other, but this is just for safety reasons. This is the most safe way to do this. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we could do a normal check with her. It's a very low check, probably a 10 or 8 anyway. But if we do it with the Illithid check, it's a 2. So why not basically assure it? Because this is a solo honor run. Well, this, this one I am doing is a solo honor. Yours might be not solo. Talk to Priestess Gut. Tell her to go to her room and meet you there. After branding you. She will. Now, I always do it in this order. I, I go to these, this lady first. Now, I failed the checks, so I did end up just blasting her. Now... Because of that, someone else noticed. I let Volo out, but I had to kill this guy too, Moonbeam. So again, this is a little extra combat than usual, but not by much. Now he uh, does an illithid power, but you don't need it for him. You just convince him you can torture the guy and then torture the guy. And then uh, unfortunately I went too soon. This guard saw me, so I Moonbeamed him to death. And then made sure to place my Moonbeam somewhere where they wouldn't walk into it. Talk to this guy, got a little more EXP. Now you go in here, as a, you can do it as a bear, so this is pretty fun, but make sure you get the Leviathar buff. It is extremely powerful if you're playing solo, because it goes away when you die, but if you're solo, you're not going to die unless you lose the game, 
So it basically means a buff for the entire rest of the game. And as a bear, it always puts you in the perfect position to get this buff. If you go too far forward, you might not get a buff, but it gives a plus four to your checks. After doing that, we're going to go to Priestess Gut, because remember, she said to meet us in her room. But we're not actually going to talk to Priestess Gut. We're going to keep going. We're going to sneak past her, lockpick her door. You can steal her key if you can't lock, do the lockpicking. Now we're going to sneak, stealth here, wait for the ogre to pass, jump back here, and do this little puzzle because it's free EXP. Boom. Then look at that, down to the Underdark. Now we're going to make sure you walk up here first because it, it makes this Minotaur run to the gate and get shot. Wait for him to die. Jump down and shoot this gem. Open the lever to open the gate. Head on out and head to the west to Falar Aluve. Nice little EXP and it's a nice little sword. We'll use it later. Now here I like to just jump as a spider. But you have to be careful because the bullet, as you see, spawns. So make sure you can keep jumping, run away, and run from that combat. He will attack you on the first round if you're far enough away from him. But even, And if he does, it might not kill you. But the, the bullet is extremely risky, so do it, it all you can to avoid that guy. He will kill you at these levels. I'm only level 3 at the moment. Now, I always talk to Blurg because I like Blurg, but you don't have to talk to him. We can get some gear from him or um, from Bone Cloak here. Now, I always go to save her husband next. Unfortunately, I always fail at saving her husband. Now, the normal way you do this is destroy all those bibber bangs and then wait for it to despawn, basically, but I'm just going to jump across. Now, what I tried on this one, uh, seeing what I could do with this solo run, was I tried to create water on the fire, which puts out the fire, makes it not explode, but the damage from the gas still gets him in the end. Unfortunate. So we just leave him there. No biggie. We can teleport back to Mike and the Colony. Now we haven't talked to Spa yet. We'll talk to Spa in a second, but first talk to her. The reason we do this is to not talk to Glut. We don't want to have we don't want to walk down there and get Glut talking to us. It just wastes time and we're not gonna do those fights yet. Talk to this gnome Help her out. Simple enough. Now that we've gotten the gnome complete and talked to Spa, we've done everything in the Mycenae colony we need to for now. So we'll head down toward the Dwargar beach, but not all the way to the beach. If we go down to the beach, we will fight the Dwargar. So we don't want that. That, that area right there, that'd be bad. So instead we're going to jump up here. And I don't really care too much about that chest. I was just trying to see if I can get it. I don't want to waste all my thieves tools. But instead, we're going to head this way to Arcane Tower. Now, I noticed the bullet was here, so I just jumped away. And it, it kept circling around, so I just went this way. And luckily, we got away from it without it starting combat. We didn't have to flee again. And see, if you go this way, you can avoid most of the um, turrets. I tried turning into a spider to see if I could jump across, but it's too short. It can't see. So I just took some damage. Then once you're down here, you have to get one of the Susser Blooms. And then it, since I'm a uh, druid, I just turn into a cat and jump in the pipe. You could also do this by going through the tower itself, but this way is much easier. If you can't turn into a cat, just be ready to lockpick that door on the bottom. Make sure you grab that to free detect thoughts forever. Then loot this entire place. This entire place is great loot, especially for the point in the game you're at. You're only level 3. This gets you a lot of things started. You get the uh, Club of Giant Strength. You get Guiding Light, which is not like OP or anything, but it's nice for certain um, combinations of builds with the Callus Low Ring later. You get this, the Sparks Wall and the Staff of Arcane Blessings. I probably would have even used the Staff of Arcane Blessings in this run if I were trying to, you know, solo. So we go up. After we've read enough books, we can give him two lines. He won't fight us, and we still get 75 EXP. So then we go over here, beat this club down, 
get the cl- or beat the ch- stool down, get the club, go to the basement after wearing guiding light, and get the last of the loot, whole bunch of scrolls, whole bunch of magic items, more tongue of madness. So now we have tongue of madness and we have um, the timisk spores. Together with those, we can do the Omeloum quest. And so we can go back to Omeloum. Drink the potion, blah, blah, blah. Go through all this stuff. Another one that doesn't seem like it gives EXP, but I was already here, so I might as well do it. I I, I also don't like to... uh, keep the Timask spores and the Tongue of Madness too long, because if you do, you uh, might use them in alchemy, and then you won't be able to do that quest. Okay, so we long rested, but then we're going to start heading to the, the windmill in the Blighted Village, just so we can do this automatically again. Go to the basement, take all the loot. Jump inside, free Barkus. Now we're almost level 4. It's closing in. Now we jump up to the north again. Now this is the first fight we really do since the goblin camp. Now I just put a spike growth down and just let them all walk into it. You can do this fight any way you want, but this just made it real easy, as you see. And with that, we are level 4. And it is just that simple. Now, depending on how many things succeed or fail, I... There's actually a couple more things we usually do. You go up here, talk to the Paladins of Tear. You're going to want to go in the basement of their building and get this waypoint. But to get to go in their basement, we actually need the key. I, I checked here and I forgot I didn't have it. So we're going to go over across, go down, get the uh, loot from this guy, get the key here, and then go recruit Karlak. Gets us a little bit more loot. And then at this point, you have recruited all the characters, you're level 4, and you have done none of the hard combats. Well, I hope this was helpful to anyone. There's a lot of loot in here, too. Um, I'm going to make another video on level 4 to 5 to show all the easiest combats you can do in a row. But otherwise, that's how you get level 1 to 4 in honor mode with minimal fights. Thanks for watching.